Hey there YouTube, it's Marvin here, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be building a budget uh, uh, gaming computer, which you can see all the parts are in front of me right now. Uh, all the parts are purchased from Amazon, aside from power supply and the monitor that I'm going to pair with it, which is purchased from Best Buy local store. So uh, during Black Friday and uh, Christmas, uh, you know, uh, day, uh, Boxing Day, this is what I've been doing. I've been shopping for the sale like uh, checking Amazon uh, local store but the, most of the parts are purchased from Amazon because Amazon has better selection and because this is a budget computer so I don't really have to go with a branded name so that's why Amazon is a really good choice for me okay so before we start I'm gonna show you what parts do we have and by the way I'm gonna put the link in the description below for all the parts that I use for this build and uh, just to let you know guys that is gonna be my affiliate link uh, with Amazon so if you guys want to buy the same exactly the same parts that I used to this build please use my affiliate link and I will really appreciate it and yeah so uh, let me show you guys what I have here all right so the case that I'm gonna be using in this build is the caters uh, uh, open frame uh, uh, gaming case and uh, if you want to see the assembly I'm gonna put the link in the description below or you can click right here and uh, next the motherboard the motherboard is like the asus prime set 59a so the main color of this build is white as you notice that the case is white as well and this is a corsair 850 watts uh, power supply also white and uh, i got the western digital 500 gigabyte ssd which uh, they can just add more storage later on if they want to and the uh, xpg uh, 16 gigabyte uh, ddr4 my daughter has this memory in her gaming computer and it's uh, she's uh, gaming with it for like almost three years now and there's no problem at all and and this is the webcam newlia i don't know how you pronounce that but it's also white and the iClever uh, wireless uh, uh, mouse and keyboard combo and and this one is just a RGB uh, headphone stand it's also white and I got the uh, Gico uh, G80 uh, Bluetooth wireless uh, gaming uh, headphone and uh, the mic actually is removable also it comes with the wire if you want to use it as a wired uh, headphone and I also got a keyboard and mouse pad, which is, that's the brand right there. Mitrix, Mitrix. And uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the, and I'm gonna be installing a water cool. This is a deep cool, uh, two fan uh, liquid cooled. That's the model number right there. So the last thing that I'm gonna show you guys is the a 27 inch monitor that's the MSI this is uh, purchased from a local Best Buy store uh, together with the uh, Corsair uh, power supply all right so that's all the parts that I have for this build and uh, yeah let's uh, start putting them together Supply. Make sure that the uh, the ventilation side is on, is facing outside, not uh, facing against the plate. And the mounting uh, plate is like reversible, as you can see. Like there's two 
holes here, two holes here, uh, so the power supply can just go either way, so which is good. And you cannot install the power supply without removing the plate, so you have to remove the plate first and uh, install the plate first into power supply and then install the power supply on the case. installed and uh, just to let you know guys that this plate here is removable with it it's held by four screws and another plate here which you can remove it later on for uh, wire management purposes so yeah uh, all right so I want to finish this side the right side first so what I'm gonna install next is the water cool right there cool block is like uh, just perfectly fit in here so that you can get through on the other side and uh, just don't want to scratch anything right now Okay, so I just want to point out this one here uh, regarding the mounting of uh, the radiator for the water cooled. As you can see on the other side here, that's uh, where the motherboard is going to be mounted. As you can see that the radiator is almost flush to the frame uh, plate. So that said, it's not good uh, ventilation because it's going to restrict the airflow circulation. So what I'm thinking is to find a longer screw and uh, put the washer there that at least if, if you can ha have like like that like half centimeter or one centimeter gap it's gonna have like a better air circulation and I have to make sure that I have to get the right uh, length of the screw and the washer because I don't wanna you know like damage the uh, radiator. Alright so I put the washer in between the mounting plate here and the uh, radiator as you can see right here I got a very good gap like uh, about an inch on the bottom here as you can see right there so I have to of course I have to use a different screw screw that I found in my collection and yeah so that's gonna give a better ventilation
All right, so another thing to point out with this case is like the, as you can see, the uh, screw standoff. They are permanently attached. You cannot remove it. So uh, it has like three, six, nine, ten standoffs. It matches the holes of the motherboard. This is the ATX motherboard. It's not the extended one. And, but it has like uh, extra here that the, my motherboard right now doesn't have that hole. So let's say this is gonna touch the bottom of the motherboard and I don't want that to cause any shortage. So uh, I was trying to try to remove it, but it's like really hard to remove it. I don't wanna damage the case. Right, so I have a felt board here. As you can see, it's uh, thick enough to insulate the board from that uh, standoff. And uh, just gonna put it right there. So hopefully it's not gonna put pressure on the board when I try to mount the motherboard. And let's see. All right, so before installing the motherboard, don't forget to install the mounting bracket for the uh, CPU cooler. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but the insulation that I put, the felt board, in between the board and the standoff, it stays, and it doesn't really put uh, pressure on the motherboard. So, but uh, but just to make sure, I'm gonna try to install a video card temporarily. Oh, by the way, yeah, uh, this build doesn't have video card yet, but I have my own to test. So yeah, let's try my test GPU. If it's gonna be mounted properly, it means that's good. All right, so GPU mounted properly. Uh, the hole here is aligned. Uh, right there, so that the felt board in between the standoff and the motherboard is good. By the way, there's only 1060, very old GPU. It has a white uh, color as much as the case, so yep. Alright, so as you can see here, I have four slots and then it's color coded like gray and black. So it means that the motherboard has a dual channel for memory. And usually the bright colors indicate the channel A and the black one is channel B. So if you're installing two memory modules, that's uh, like what I have right now. So you have to use like the same color. So at this time, I'm going to use the gray one. Make sure to pay attention with the slot. Uh, as you can see here, the left side is shorter. And which one is shorter here? Right there. So I'm going to turn it to the right. And I open the tab here, the locking tab on the other side. And the other side is a, a permanent. So what you have to do is just like push them evenly until it clicks. There you go. It clicks. You just have to make sure that the lock is... a properly in place and again this time here second one there you go now the memory installed and then we're going to install the SSD so this motherboard has three M.2 slots one two and three 
So I'm going to use the one that is closer to the CPU. That's also the same when you're installing a video card. Uh, this one, as you can see, it has like a three PCIe slots. But you always have to use the close, the, the one that's closer to the CPU because because the one that is closer to the CPU is the main is the main one, and it usually has the PCIe uh, higher PCIe lanes. So we're gonna use this one here. And I like this motherboard that ha comes with the heatsink, and I would guess that it has right here. It has like a the thermal pad as well so when it's when installing this back make sure to remove this another thing to point out if you see the standoff for the ssd that has plastic like this it means that you don't need the screw for the ssd this is the one that's gonna lock the ssd in place so you just have to position that like that and uh, install your ssd like that and then you just have to turn this uh, clockwise and uh, your SSD is locked in place and again don't forget to peel off the plastic uh, the protective film for the thermal pad before installing it back the lock and lift this up and can hold it on the side and as you can see right here there is a guide here the bottom notches on the side of the bottom here so I'm just gonna drop it carefully there you go then I'm gonna lock it in. Make sure that this one here, the slot here is into the screw and then you just have to push it down and then lock it and that plastic pops out right there. So it's just like that. Okay, so the uh, deep cool water cooling, it's a uh, universal, it's uh, compatible with Intel AMD, so it comes with two mounting bracket. In my case, my motherboard is uh, uh, Intel, so I'm gonna use this one here. And it has to be mounted to uh, the water block first, like that. All right, so let's see what's gonna be the position of the water block. So it's gonna be like this as you can see the uh, brand is right there so it's gonna be like that and the mounting so the mounting can just go either on the side or on the top so probably i'll install it like that
as you can see there's two connectors here this one here is gonna go to the light controller that's gonna be the LED light on the water block by the way I forgot to put the uh, spacer on the water block so I'm gonna put that in there So the cable that we are going to need is the one for the motherboard, that is the uh, 24 pins and uh, one cable for the GPU, we have one, and then the cable for the CPU and one SATA cable in case we need it. Right, so this is modular power supply, so all the cables are not connected. So that's all we need, we have lots, lots of extra cables. It's heavy. specific uh, uh, connector so you won't make a mistake actually this is uh, you can install the regular SSD like the 2.5 if you need to Okay, so CPU installed so I'm gonna try to power it on if let's see if we can get the picture and then after that we're gonna I'm going to do the some wire management and uh, I will install operating system uh, but before that I just want to show you guys what I did here for the water cooling I didn't use this one here and what I did is I follow this uh, this one here the connection right here because uh, because I have like a 3 RGB control on the uh, motherboard, one, two, and another one uh, right here. So that's uh, perfect. So that said, that's gonna be less wire. Also the LED for the case, I also gonna supply that through motherboard so that I don't have to use this other cable as well. Okay, so the mini monitor connected. By the way, the monitor that I'm using right now is a USB powered. So that's really convenient. And yeah, so let's uh, turn it on. 
Okay, the moment of truth. Oops, I forgot to turn the power supply switch on. There you go. Uh, Alright, so I have power on the LCD. I can see the light. And let's turn it on. See if we can get picture. No signal. All right, we get a picture. Shows Asus. Let's go there. So we have picture. So it means everything connected properly. I don't have operating system yet. And look at how beautiful is that? And everything is lit up. So for the water block, the uh, pump, you can connect it to any uh, fan connector, like the chassis connector or the system system fan connector. And, and for the two radiator fan, that's going to be served as the CPU fan and it comes with adapter here. And uh, you have to connect it to the CPU uh, fan connector. As you can see, the CPU fan connector is different color, it's gray, uh, while the rest are black. So that's uh, so that this motherboard can uh, detect that you have the fan uh, connected to the system. All right, so let me do the wire management, and uh, after that, I'm gonna install operating system. It's gonna be Windows 11. All right, so I did the wire management as good as I can. So I cover all the black wires with wire sleeve. As you can see right there. And right here to the wire pump, I just tried to hide that underneath. And now I guess it's time to re remove the plastic. There you go. And another plastic right here. Oops. Didn't go well. There is another plastic underneath. You can see on the top here, I also covered it with wire sleeve. And at the front, I covered everything. Now it's really, you cannot see the black wires except the black washer. And on this side here, it's more cleaner. Alright, so it's time to put the glass on and uh, let's see how it looks like. By the way, since the I get all the supply from the motherboard, so I don't need the SATA cable anymore, so that's less cable. And this is the wire sleeve that I use. Bought it from Amazon as well. And I'm gonna put the link in the description below. This is gonna be my affiliate link. I'm not gonna remove the plastic film of the glass until I set it up at my brother's place just to protect it from scratches
right guys, everything is ready. I got Windows 11, I think, in this one here. So yeah, let's try to install Windows. Let's say this is gonna detect the USB automatically without uh, uh, selecting the boot sequence. It should turn automatically as well. I think it's detecting it now. There you go. By the way, that was my son. Actually, we'll enter your FI settings. New CPU installed. Please enter setup configure system. So I think we have to enter setup F1 to continue the given page. Next to the performance F1. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna load the setup default. I think it's, no, it's not that. Default is F5. Different motherboard is different uh, key. So, say, and then just exit uh, F10. Let's see if it detects the USB this time. Alright, so it detects the USB, as you can see right there, setting up. Alright, so now there's no picture, so I believe I have to move the monitor to the uh, video card now. Let's do that. Yes, that's gonna be the your main display now. Is the GPU? Shoot. Now let's try to. Yes, we started. There we go. So now I'm connected to the uh, GPU instead of the uh, HDMI out from the motherboard because the we we already have Windows uh, installed. All right, there you go, guys. Windows installed, so I'm just gonna stop right here and then I'm gonna uh, pack everything up and then uh, set it up at my brother's place.